My name is Yasser, I'm an advanced specialist pharmacist in secondary care and a senior lecturer in pharmacy practice. Today I want to speak to you about a topic that I find very interesting and it's one that I always remember with regards to my journey. What I want to speak about is the fact that I went from an E grade in chemistry to getting a first in pharmacy school. And the reason why this story is particularly important to me is because of the fact that at a certain point within my career and within my studies, I lost hope. If I didn't find that hope again, and if I didn't get back into my studies, then I would definitely not be where I am today. So I'm incredibly grateful for all of the things that I've learned throughout this journey. And that's something that I want to share today in this video. So as you probably guessed, I currently work within the UK. I wanted to become a pharmacist from a relatively early age. And that's something that I cover in previous videos. I really had an interest in having a patient facing role within healthcare. That's particularly because of the fact that I wanted a healthcare focused career and I wanted to use my love of sciences within a profession that I was familiar with. At the time, I was familiar with the pharmacy profession and I had spent some time in pharmacies because a lot of people within my family are pharmacists. So it's something that I was looking into from an early age and that's why I tailored the A-levels that I was going to be completing at college for a pharmacy degree. And that's obviously something that a lot of people would do. You'd look at the requirements of different degrees at university and you'll try to focus on topics that are relevant and needed for that degree. So with regards to the pharmacy degree, it's a master's in pharmacy, so it's four years. There are three subjects that you need to have an A, B and B grade in order to be accepted into pharmacy school. At the time when I was researching, what I found from a lot of the schools I was speaking to was I could complete an A-level in chemistry, biology and the third subject was of my choice. One subject that I really enjoyed during my GCSEs was media studies. I actually found it to be so much more understandable than a lot of the topics out there. I had a really good grasp of interpreting meanings behind different movies and different movie scenes and um, having an understanding of the levels and depth of developing those movie scenes and I've always had an interest in any form of media and design. So a lot of the projects were really exciting. There was one project in particular where it was our responsibility to use Photoshop to develop an entire DVD cover for a movie that you're creating. It was also our responsibility to create an entire trailer for a movie that didn't exist. So essentially you create a trailer for a movie you decide the movie name and you create a DVD poster in the entire project. Really exciting projects and really interesting projects. And I think my love of everything I do with regards to the creativity side of Microform came from media studies. Sometimes I'll be sitting with my friends and watching something and I'll be like, do you understand what the director or what the producer is trying to do with this scene? Or do you understand X, Y, and Z? And they actually think, I'm just making things up because of the fact that a lot of people don't have that grasp of concepts behind developing different forms of media. So it's something that I was really glad I chose. Now with regards to my other two subjects, I really struggled with the chemistry and biology. It's interesting because I love sciences at GCSE. I got an A grade in my GCSE science. It's something that I really did not expect to struggle on. So I really found it difficult to grasp different concepts in chemistry and biology and at the end of my first year I got an E grade and a U grade. So an E grade in chemistry and a U grade in biology and a C grade in media studies. If you remember to what I said before it still wasn't enough for me to study for pharmacy. I then completed my second year and during that year I was able to get three C's. So I did a lot better than the first year again it was not enough for me to be accepted into pharmacy degree at the time every pharmacy school within the uk had turned me down and now i had to reset my a levels and i realized it was going to be a difficult task one of the main things that i didn't do very well was look at sample questions i looked at them very late and i realized that that's something i can develop on so what i started to do was i started to break down the different topics by unit. I then started studying different units and what I tried to do was 
find every single sample question for every unit that I studied. So I went back for about eight years worth of sample questions. And those were readily available online for the AQA exams that I was sitting. So I probably went through at least three or 400 questions uh, for each exam, whether that be for chemistry and microbiology. Those are the things that I really think made a massive difference. One, I was testing myself repeatedly for everything that I newly learned. And I think that's incredibly important when it comes to studying for an exam. At the end of my repeat year, I was able to turn those three C's that I got in my A-level into three A's. So, so if you remember, during my AS year, so my first year of my A-levels, I got an E grade in chemistry. I was able to increase that to a C, wasn't enough for pharmacy, I was able to increase that to an A. Then I got three A's across the board. While studying at university, I realized the importance of practice testing. So this was very important to me. I started to create practice questions throughout my year to start to develop an understanding of how different exam questions could be set. Having an understanding of the fact that an examiner will have to test you on the content that they have delivered to you and then looking at that and trying to create your own questions really developed a greater understanding of the examination process and I have an entire video where I speak about the steps that I went through in order to get a first in my degree. So I'm going to link that video in the description box below. If you found this video useful, like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.